Granddaddy Brett. So, uh, how old are you now, Granddaddy? 82. 82. That means you were born in February of 19... January. January. 20th, 1921. That's right, because it was the day I joined the Army. And then you had... Your dad was... What was your dad's name? Horse. Oh. Horse M. Brandt. And then, then your grandfather. We, we saw... It was a great-grandfather that we saw. In that picture? Right. Well, I never knew... Well, uh, the only time I ever remembered him was just a few, no, a few months, I guess, before he died, and I was only about two years old. Yeah. And uh, I remember him laying in bed, and he had a white, long white beard. He come down about here, and it was above the cover. <laughs> and, uh, my great grandmother, she died in 19. 30, I believe it was, 1931. So you probably got some memory of her. Oh yeah, and she was blind and, uh, but, um, she had good hearing and everything and she was, she was pretty, a pretty rugged woman. She was part Cherokee Indian, I think, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, either Cherokee or Blackfoot or some of the, some of the Indian tribes and, uh, my grandfather was, uh, he was French, but I don't know he had, you know, whether he was, uh, had any other... Mixing in him? Uh, uh, nationality mixed up in him. Uh, mm -hmm. well, the, Br the Brandt side, the Brandt side came from uh, Denmark, right? Huh? The, the Brandt side the of the Brandt, family. Yeah, they came from uh, Copenhagen, Denmark. Mm -hmm. Do you know, you happen to know about when you came over this way, or? Uh, let's see, he was, well, my dad, my dad was born in this country, my grandfather on, on the branch side, uh, he came over from Denmark, and his brother came over from Denmark, I never knew, I, I never knew my uncle, but my grandmother, she was a Mills, and she was born and raised in I believe it was in uh, North Carolina. I know when my granddaddy. When my great, when my granddaddy on the Brant side came to this country, he came in on a sailboat and landed in Boston. And he migrated down south because it was too cold up there. For him. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to believe coming out of Denmark and Boston yeah. was too cold. <clears throat> so he came down. He come pretty much straight into Jacksonville, or did well, he settled out here at Dame Point. Okay. So. And, uh, that's where that's where all the Danish people settled. Okay, everybody kind of went over to the Dames Point area. Okay. And uh, my grandfather on my mother's side, I don't know, I don't know where they migrated from. Uh, but I think he was born and raised somewhere around the Mayport area. It might have been St. Augustine, or right. it might have been Ferndina or somewhere, but I know he, he came from a fishing village. Okay, so... That's, that's all I know. And uh, they lived in Mayport, which was uh, a fishing village. It still is. Yeah. And, uh, my, my grandmother was born in Florida, but I don't know just what city or anything, but it was right around this area somewhere. Around, so, around the Jacksonville, Duval County area. <clears throat> both sides of your, your grandparents were both uh, both river people. Everybody yeah. grew up on the water. and. Well, that's, uh, back in them days, uh, like, like, kind of like Japanese, everybody fished, you know? Right. And uh, there wasn't, uh, well, my 
my great granddaddy. I have heard now. I don't know for sure, but I've heard that he was a mail carrier between Jacksonville and St. Augustine. He used to have Pony Express route. Okay. And, uh, a horse and buggy. Uh, horseback. Oh, horseback. I mean, that probably took a lot longer than the 30 minutes it takes now. Yeah. He didn't have any paved highways either, did they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had to go through the swamps and everything. He was, uh, I heard that he was shot by an Indian who didn't kill him. But whatever it was, I think must have, must have, uh, Crippled him up pretty bad or something else because uh, I know I never knew what kind of work except for the, what I heard being being a Pony Express driver, a rider. Granddaddy and grandmother on my mother's side used to run a kind of crab factory, right? And they uh, they got the crabs and picked up the crab meat and stuff like that and. But my grandmother made devil crabs and uh, sold them to the little old stores and stuff around Mayport. And but she sold off the off the front porch of her house. His <laughs> mother used to make the best <clears throat> devil crab, and uh, his sister Marguerite made them, and Helena. Mm. The, I've never learned the art of making devil crab. <laughs> I like to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Learn the art of eating them, but not uh, making them. <laughs> well, the, the eating part's the, the best part anyway. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the point in making them. Yeah, so, so let's see, we got your, going back to your, we're talking about your grandfather, and and then what your what your dad do? What's he? Well... He was a fisherman too to start off with when he was when when his daddy died in nineteen uh, he was my dad was only seven years old. And uh, he had one brother and one sister. And my grandmother, which was uh, she was a mills. And I was thinking, well, I know she uh, she run a little store in a, in a post office in, in uh, New Berlin, which is Dames Point. It's uh, New Berlin. That's on the on the other side of the river from Dames yeah. Point, right? Yeah. Uh, near Blunt Island, or is it? It's uh, right at Blunt Island, but it's on the on the mainland side. There. Okay. See, Blunt Island itself is just an island out there that used to be called Goat Island. The family of uh, Christopher's took a couple of goats over there and they they homesteaded the place for a long time. <laughs> and they raised goats. And they were fishermen too. And but getting back to the story of the Brants, uh, my mother was raised in Mayport, my dad was raised in Dam Point, which is about six miles by water. Right. And he used to catch the outgoing tide, go to Mayport, catch the incoming tide coming back. <laughs> so it was swimming? too hard. Huh? Swimming? No, uh, in the rowboat. Rowboat, yeah, they didn't have much uh, powered boats back then, did they? Yeah, they had uh, there's a few of them, but most of them were sail. Right. But, uh, and they had what they call skipjacks, which was a it was a sail it was a sail motorboat and a little motor just just enough to in case there was no wind you know right. to take them they would they could get back home It'd take a little longer time to <laughs> right to get back home. Yeah. And so. Uh... So is that how they met uh, your dad floating out to Mayport and 
Well, he used to run the mail over there. Okay. And uh, my mother was a, she was a maid in the hotel over there. Your and, mother? Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. Hey, you remember that old big hotel that used to be on the corner? In Mayport. In Mayport. I guess. That's that's where they met. When they had the post office there too, you know, and when he delivered mail and that kind of Strike up a conversation and. Yeah. Well, I've seen uh, I've seen pictures and I've seen the painting of a a big houseboat that somebody in the family used to live on. We all did. <laughs> Everybody did, huh? That's what he, I did. he lived on the houseboat when I met him. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so what's uh, whose whose boat was that, and uh, how long Three did that? Uh, hours. That was. His dad made it. Oh really? That was a that was a big old boat. Uh, yes. Yeah. Was, wasn't too damn big. It was back in them days, but I mean, it was uh, it was built on a. It was turned up by seventy-two foot barge. Yeah. And uh, the house itself, the house itself, when there was uh, I think it was about sixty, fifty-eight foot or something like that, long and thirty foot wide. How many of your how many children were there in your family? Nine. And each so, one of them had their own bedroom. So it was, <laughs> so, house so, so it was pretty, was big. pretty big. Yeah, so there were nine kids, so there's at least nine bedrooms. We had, uh, was, each one of us had our own bedroom, but there's only three baths in the house. And, uh, it was two upstairs and one downstairs. So how did the uh, how did the plumbing work on that? Did you just pump river water into it, or? No, you use city water. Okay. Uh, just see, we tied up in the, uh, had a bulkhead and and a dock, and just run a hose line over from the bank to to the uh, houseboat. Okay. But all the wastewater and everything went right into the river. Yeah, they didn't, didn't have septic tanks or anything on the, on the boat. Okay. Well, back then the city sewers dumped straight into the river too, so. Yeah. About the, about the same yeah, fish and eat the fish out of the river. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go out in the morning before school and catch enough fish for supper that night. And then? And shrimp. And shrimp right off the boat. On the houseboat. So did the, uh, did the boat always stay in one, one place or did yeah. you? The only way you could move it would be to take a towboat. And over. pull it out, yeah. But, uh, well, we lived on that from... Well, we built it in 1932 and lived on it until 1940... Just, just before the war started, wasn't it? Yeah, 1941. Okay, so... So that was mostly uh, mostly your teenage years on the boat then. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, what's uh, what's one of your maybe one of your your biggest memories when you were a kid? One of the maybe one of the funnest things or one of the scariest things that that happened when you were little. I know uh, I know about that time there was the the Great Depression, so yeah, so that had to be kind of scary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't scary because we didn't realize, you know the. We never had anything, so we didn't worry about it. Yeah. Know? Like we had three meals on the table, and sometimes it'd be three meals of fish on the table. <laughs> hey. so we'd eat three meals a day. Yeah. Well. And you go to, the, you know, uh, my dad uh, worked, he was a foreman, foreman in the shipyard, and he uh, had a lot of farmers working for him. And we got fresh fruits, every, or fresh vegetables every uh, Sunday we got. Somebody's house and all loaded down with fresh vegetables. And so, uh, so we didn't have to worry. <laughs> so, you, so you probably probably one of the the luckier families. You 
You probably didn't have a whole lot of luxury items, but you at least had had food on the table. Luxury. We had luxury every morning when we got up. Yes, they had food. Yeah. A lot of times we didn't during the bad depression. Yeah. Uh, my dad was a carpenter, and nobody was building when, during the depression. Oh, they right. couldn't afford to. Right. So uh, he would go different places. He came to Jacksonville and uh, worked a little while, and he'd send money home. And, uh, and but then when he, they got through building whatever it was. That was all he had to do, so they came back home and tried to find work. But it was it was really rough for us. He had some brothers who farmed, and they would give us some of their vegetables from the farm. And um, a lot of nights we went to bed hungry. Yeah, hey, grandmother, you said that uh, that your dad he would he would send money back home. Where was home was in? Georgia, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah a little place. town called Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And that was... And um, we later moved to Statesboro, which was about nine miles from there. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of a small town, too, but bigger than Brooklyn. And he figured that he'd find more work to do there. But still people weren't having anything done. They couldn't afford it. Right. As a matter of fact, we couldn't afford anything until Roosevelt got an office. Yeah, I remember. And he created jobs and started the CCC. You know, for APL. <laughs> for young boys, men, young men, uh, and they would go and like in a group to different parts of the country and work. I think they went over to Hoover Dam and worked. Yeah, they, the uh, CCCs was mostly a, what they call a conservation... Civilian Conservation Corps. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they, uh, that, that helped a lot of families. Uh, he had the right idea. Yeah. They, they kind of uh, pulled us out. We built parks and campgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, that uh, well, they lived at while they were doing the work, you know. So uh, it was, it was pretty nice. They'd, they'd make a couple of dollars a, a week. Something to for, for spending money. The rest of the time, they got they got their food and everything, sleep support and all that for free. But they had to build it. Right. Before they got it. Mm. And uh, then when the war broke out, of course everybody went to went to work in shipyards and their aircraft factories and clothing factories and stuff like Marine, that. Machine shops and Yeah. Right down there where the Assumption Church and School is now the Bishop Kenny School. That was a uh, shirt factory during the war. When I was, I was born and raised on the south side, and at that time it was a South Jacksonville, and when you cross the river you got into Jacksonville. And we had our own the mayor and police force and everything on the south side. But uh, when it, when it, uh, Consolidation thing? Consolidated it, yeah. Then they made it all one Jacksonville, and now the whole whole county is Jacksonville, which is one of the biggest cities in in the United States, except for uh, Alaska. Yeah, Juneau, you know, Juneau, you know Alaska. I think. Is yeah. it. I want to I want to talk a little bit about your family, grandmother. Uh, you remember? I think that my family came mostly from Ireland and France. And Germany. They, uh, Your dad had a lot of German in him. They too uh, migrated down in North Carolina and then on down south. And, and your family was the, your your dad's family was the Hendricks family. Yes. And then... And they were all boys. My mother, my grandmother and granddaddy Hendricks had 
ten kids and they were all boys. <laughs> Farm hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, and well, that's what they did in the farming. So that was good, I guess. And uh, anyway, we. Um, we on the other side of the family were Dierso's, which is French. Yeah. Dier Dierso? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we lived simply. And uh, there were five of us children. And. In your family? Six, really. The seven. Yeah, no, six. Six. Lewis came along later. But uh, we grew up with. Mostly five. And uh, my mother and dad were pretty strict. And we, there are certain things my mother didn't allow, like <coughs> uh, fussing or uh, any words that weren't just right. Mm -hmm. no, and she didn't own a lot of rough housing. <laughs> no rough housing. No. <laughs> and so we were kind of a peaceful family, I guess you'd say. And that was that was little Granny, right? Yes. And she was she was a music teacher. Was that She's, what what she do? Was it? I think. Uh, she did a lot of things. She taught piano. Okay. She taught school, and then she um, said a lot. Working. which was popular back then. And uh, even after we got married, she worked. And she worked at, uh, it was May Cohen's then. Okay, then it became? Furch goods and the, the higher class stores. And she would redo men's suits. And I mean, uh, that was pretty, Tough sewing. No, I'll bet. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, she worked right on.